The weight gain is seen as unhealthy, disgusting, lazy, a lack of self-control. Weight loss will bring you happiness internally and it's just not true. Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emily and if you are new here, I am currently on a journey of healing my mind, body and soul from hypothalamic amenorrhea, but more entrenched in my mind. I'm trying to heal from years and years of diet culture, eating disorders, and disordered eating patterns and behaviors. And that is so challenging. So I've already had one recovery period as I'm trying to heal from HA, and I'd love for you to check out my other videos. I'll link them all below so you can get a really good understanding of what HA is and all the symptoms and problems that I had within myself due to not having my menstrual cycle. I am convinced I will get another one, which is going to be great. But the not so great part about this journey is the weight gain. And most people will find that when they are trying to recover from hypothalamic amenorrhea or from eating disorders or from disordered eating behaviors and patterns, that weight gain is a pretty essential part of this journey. And that is really, really challenging to accept. We live in a society where weight gain is seen as unhealthy. It is seen as disgusting, lazy, a lack of self-control. We do everything and anything in our power to get the fat off our bodies. Personally, I have starved myself. I have vomited before. I have exercised when I haven't wanted to exercise. I've restricted in so many different ways, all to be a small size. And why is that? Because weight loss in our culture is applauded, it's praised, it's seen as self-control, you have good willpower, everyone comments, you're made to feel like it's just the be all and end all of trying to be a better person, that weight loss will bring you happiness internally and it's just not true. Weight loss just means you're thinner that's it it doesn't bring happiness it doesn't bring anything else along with it and in my case being thinner meant that I didn't have a period it meant that I was always cold it meant that my sex drive was so low underground that I had to dig deep to find it it meant that my relationship suffered and so in order to be healthy I had to gain weight and that was trying to undo years and years and years and years of what I'd been taught and what I believed so here we are with one recovery period down, which is exciting, and a lot of weight gained. And I still struggle with this every day. But there are a few things that I've been doing that have been really, really helping me on this journey. And I wanted to share them with you all today. The very first one is don't ignore the negative feelings that you are feeling. It is so important that if you are having a rubbishy day, you're having a bad body image day, you are feeling awful within your own skin and your self-esteem is feeling low, that you just embrace that. And that sounds like the opposite thing that we should be doing. I know some like put on a happy face, like just wear the outfit, you'll be fine. But if we pretend those feelings aren't there, then we never truly get to the bottom of them. We never truly try to understand where they're coming from and we can never truly break them apart, which means they're always going to be there lingering under the surface. So it's really, really critical that you allow yourself to feel. I was crying in the kitchen the other day. I had my husband there, my mum there, and I felt ridiculous because I'm crying over the fact that my bathers don't fit me. I mean, people are dying, people are sick, people are going through lots and lots of different things, but you have to understand that stress is relative to you. And if you're having a bad day because your bathers don't fit, that's okay. And you need to feel those feelings without judgment, without guilt, and without shame. Just feel them. Because the quicker you feel them, the quicker you can move through them and you can feel better again, as opposed to just repressing them and pretending that they don't exist. I like to think of your emotions in like a fizzy drink metaphor. If you keep burying them and burying them and burying them or shaking out the bottle, the tension gets bigger and bigger. And at some point, it's just going to explode. So it's really important that when you feel it, you just let it out. Feel it, let it out, feel it, let it out. And what that does is, is it opens up more space in your life for you to feel all the amazing emotions that you want to truly be feeling, the joy, the happiness, the freedom, the fun. So make sure you feel them. That's really, really critical. The other thing for me that has been really, really important in reframing my mindset around weight gain is giving myself permission to actually change physically. 
I don't believe that the body that I'm in right now will be the body that I'm even in tomorrow, let alone in three months time. This is where I need to be right now for recovery and to help myself heal from this binge restrict cycle I've been in and to also help me heal from hypothalamic amenorrhea properly. You're not healed until you've had three recovery periods. So we still have a long way to go, but it's really important that you give yourself permission to change. Our bodies change all the time. If they didn't, we would still look like five-year-old girls. We grow, we develop breasts, we go through puberty, we change all the time. And I feel like we are constantly told that we can't change, that I have to have the same body I had when I was 20 or when I was 23. And now I'm 28 and my body looks really different because I'm going through a period of recovery and of course it's going to look different. I have to give myself permission that it's okay to change. It doesn't mean that I'm lazy. It doesn't mean that I'm embarrassing. It doesn't mean that I've given up. In actual fact, I'm doing the opposite of giving up. I'm trying harder and harder than I ever have before to heal my body. And that means gaining weight, which is crazy because like I said before, we've been told that weight gain is unhealthy and it is the worst thing possible for you to do, but it's really not. Some of us need it to be healthy. I need it to be healthy. So you can say that with me as well. We need weight gain to be healthy. We have to eat to be healthy. It's really, really important. One big thing that I've been doing too is reframing my thoughts and having gratitude towards certain aspects of my body. Now, there are specific aspects of my body personally that are triggering for me. One is my boobs because they are so large. I tend to dress in a way that doesn't make them so in your face because I don't like them. But every time I think of a negative thing about my boobs and about them being so big, I just have immense gratitude for them. And for me, that is about thinking about the fact that they literally allowed me to feed and nurture my son for a whole year of his life. I had such an oversupply of milk and it was amazing. So I am trying to reframe any negative thought patterns that I have. It doesn't mean that I'm going to wake up immediately and love that part of my body but it's allowing me to think about it in a positive light and have gratitude for that part of my body as well. My stomach is another area. And what I have to remember is that if I don't have any fat on my stomach, I have no estrogen going on and I don't have my period. So it's actually really important. It's really important for me to carry fat there. And that means that I'm healthy. I've been writing down specific negative thought patterns and then writing down the thought that I would like to reframe it with next to it. So every time I think that thought pattern, then I automatically will try and think of the positive version of that. It's a great exercise that you can do really with anything in your life that's going bad, just to try and help you reframe it completely. Logically, I know that weight gain is hardly a big problem in my life. I'm not going to die from it. You know, people still love me. I've got support. But because of this conditioning that society has done on me and on so many people as well, undoing that and unpacking that, it's really scary. Gaining weight is a fearful act. It doesn't automatically associate with being healthy to me. And I know that's the same with other people as well. So it's really important that you start to reframe that. Gaining weight is not unhealthy. Gaining weight is healthy. Just something as simple as that. As soon as you think that, swap it with that. Not exercising means that I'm lazy. Actually, not exercising means that I'm recovering and I'm allowing my body to heal and to rest and to do what it's wanted to do for so, so many years. So it's critical that you start to think differently about your body. You're not going to wake up and love it tomorrow, but at some point it'll be easier. And at some point you'll be able to come out of it and really appreciate all the amazing things that you've done for your body to help yourself heal on this journey. The other thing that has been amazing for me, and I know people say this all the time, but really, it's really, really important, is to follow some body diverse or body positive pages on social media. We all spend way too much time on our phones. Let's face it. We are scrolling all the time. And if you constantly have images of people's bodies coming up that are the ideal body weight for you or someone that you want to look like, you're going to constantly be trying to match that or be feeling even more guilty when you are gaining weight. There are some incredible pages of women out there who are just embracing everything they've got. And I love and admire these people so much. A couple are Alex Light. She is amazing and suffered from an eating disorder before. Jessica Megan, 
unbelievable just embraces everything her sexuality her tummy rolls just like we all should but we all struggle with it so i really recommend following them and definitely megan um body posi panda she's great there's heaps of others that i follow too but they're just the three that come to mind that are really helping me change how i see my own body but also allowing me just to see the beauty in ourselves all the time Again, it doesn't mean that I'm waking up and I'm loving all my roles and all the things that are changing in my body, but it is allowing me to see that maybe one day I can, and maybe one day I'm not going to be so obsessed with having to be a certain size or to shrink my body to, to fit in society and to fit in our cultural standards of what we deem attractive or what we think is necessary for women to look like. The next thing is to wear comfy clothes and that might mean you're wearing the exact same thing every day. I'm living in my little like exercise shorts because they are so stretchy on the waistband and my body is changing all the time because sometimes I'm eating a lot and a bit bloated. I really don't know what my current true size is at the moment so just elastic things are amazing. Just be comfortable even if that means you're wearing baggy jumpers all the time because honestly at the end of the day you just need to feel comfortable in what you're wearing and wearing a bra that is three sizes too small and is like suffocating your ribcage is really not fun for anyone. So if you can and if you have the money, go out and buy a whole new wardrobe. But if you're at the beginning of your recovery journey and your body is changing pretty rapidly, then I would just recommend living in some really comfy, loose clothes for now until you can figure out what your true size is and then you can go on a nice shopping spree and treat yourself. The last thing that has been so critical for me throughout this is to have support. And that support looks different for everyone. For me, my main support network is my family and my husband and my mom, my sister and my brother and my dad, and I could go on, but also friends and really reaching out to the people that know you the best but also reaching out to people that don't know you at all. I've mentioned before the support group for HA, which is from the book No Period Now What? And honestly, those girls are everything to me at the moment. Connecting with the women in this group have been absolutely amazing and just priceless. I cannot say how worthwhile it is, is to find a group of people really going through the exact same thing as you. Some days I feel quite ridiculous and stupid that I get so caught up in body image and how I look and you know it just seems so ridiculous given what else is going on in the rest of the world at any given time. But this is my journey and this is really big for me and having these other women to talk to that are really all going through the same thing just makes you feel really less alone and makes you feel like you have a community of people who not only have your back but understand truly what you are going through. So I can't recommend this group enough if you are someone going through HA but if you are just going through weight gain in general and trying to you know deal with that then reach out to someone that you can trust and let them know don't stay up in here share your problems with people be vulnerable and be brave because that's really the true way that we can start to heal ourselves and by opening up to other people we allow other people to open up to us and to share their truths and to heal themselves as well from whatever it is that they might be going through say hey <laughs> This is Hunter. This little boy changes my entire life because you love me all the time. Not having mints? No! Well, if you want fizzy, you gotta go see Dad. You don't want any fizzy water? Oh, he's a trickster. And really, at the end of the day, none of it matters whatsoever because I have this little one to remind me what is really important and how my pants fit or how my shorts fit. None of it truly, truly matters because I can run and jump and love and play with you all day. And that's really all that matters to me. So I really hope that these little things have maybe allowed you to already begin to reframe weight gain and what it means to gain weight. And for me, that is weight gain means health which is crazy because that is the opposite thing I've told myself for so many years. But right now, this is me in recovery and this is what I need to heal my body and to honestly be the best version of myself possible. Someone who has their menstrual cycle, someone who has a healthy sex drive, someone who is free from restriction and binge eating and free from 
all the food rules that I've had in place for so many years. It's really important that if I want to and if you want to just live a really peaceful life where food is not the focus of your every single day and every single minute, that you give this recovery your best shot. And if that means you gain 10 kilos, 15 kilos, 20 kilos, at this point in time, you just have to say, who cares? Because this is what I need to do to be on my journey of health and on my journey of recovery. So hopefully this video has inspired you just a little bit to maybe gain a little bit more weight if that's what you need or to accept the weight that you have already gained. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to comment, like, or subscribe below. And if you are on this journey, please know that you are so brave. You are so so courageous and you can recover from whatever it is you're recovering from whether it's ha eating disorders or disordered eating patterns whatever it is you can live a happier life free from all of that you might just need to accept that a little weight gain might be the solution to your problems hope you'll have a beautiful week and i will touch base with you soon